bearing all my sin and shame in love you came and gave amazing grace thank you for this love Lord. thank you for the nail pierced hands washed me in your Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you um, to this, our second Advent service that we are sharing with you. And of course, you know, we are well into the celebration of the Christmas season and the first coming of Jesus Christ. So in that spirit, we welcome you wherever you are listening from, whether you are from the Mount Zion Charge or you are from the Farmites Charge. Mount Zion meaning Baritone Lilliput and Mount Zion Congregation are Farmites or you're from the Caribbean um, listening and or in the in the North American region or European region. We welcome you and we trust that the season has already brought you much blessing and prosperity and inspiration. So as we commence today, we want to start with a very well loved song of mine and I guess for a lot of you too who oh come or oh come Emmanuel.
Father, we just thank you that you so love the world that you sent your only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in you, Lord, should not perish but have everlasting life. We're glad that, O oh God, you sent your Son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. As we reflect on your word today, we ask you, Lord, to open our eyes. Lord, will you draw us closer to you by the power of your Spirit, and that we pray for those who are yoked in any way to things that are evil and things that are captive, holding them bound. We pray that you will speak to them, set them free, and liberate them. In Jesus' name we pray. So we pray for those in the Caribbean, that you will speak to them, those in Haiti, in, in Ukraine, those in Russia, those in Israel and Palestine, O oh God Almighty, and Hamas, in these areas we pray for them, pray for their release, Pray for their for, for hope and for peace in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for those in Jamaica, those who have gone astray, that you will set them free and liberate them from the spirit of oppression and corruption. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time, brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a passage from the book of John, John chapter 1 and verse 1 to 14, Advent passage. I want you to share with me. It says, and of course, John meaning the gospel, not the first, second, and third John. So we'll read from verse 1 to verse 14 of the text. And the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of humankind. And the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to be a witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the light, the true light, which lighted every person that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to be called the sons of of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of, um, of man, 
but of God. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. This is the word of God. May God, may you bring this word to our hearts, a word that is already blessed. And may you fill our hearts with the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. I want to share with us today, brothers and sisters, on the topic, the word becoming flesh. Now, words are the means through which humankind express themselves and communicate with others. But our words, through our words, or by our words, we make our thoughts and feelings known. The words that we speak carry the impress of our thoughts and character. And so we can be truly known through the words we speak. So as a person's word, so as a person, person's word is the person's character in, a, in expression. So if you want to know and truly know somebody, just get them talking or speak to them. The, the whole character and um, everything about them will be revealed. In a similar way, the word of God is the means by which God communicates his full essence and 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 being to us it is the it is the means through which god expresses his power his intelligence and his will the bible refers to christ as the word of god that's why the bible itself is the is the entire expression of god and is centered around jesus christ and so we don't say the words of God, we say the word of God. Okay, so the word of the, Jesus Christ is described as the word, all right? The word of God. Since through Christ, God reveals his will, God reveals his purpose, and God reveals his character to humankind. So as we express ourselves through as we express ourselves through words, so God expresses himself through Jesus Christ, his son, for he is the expressed image of the Father. Christ is the word of God, by virtue of the fact that through Christ God reveals himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Christ, brothers and sisters, did not only bring God's message to us. Christ is a message himself which God wants to get to us. Hebrews 1 and verse 1 to 3 says, God who in olden times and in different ways spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2, he has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the world. And the verse 3 says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. You see that? Now, when, we, when he had by himself, the, the, the passage continues to say, purge our sins, he sat down, on the right hand of the majesty and high. Christ in being then expresses the image of the Father. That's why when Philip was inquiring of him, show me the Father and it will suffice us, he says, have I been so long time with you and you ask me to show the Father to you? Don't you know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Christ then is the express image of the Father and is like a die representing the original design or copy, the person and nature of God, the Father, and, and he shows the entire character of God to us. Brothers and sisters, though there is a oneness between them both, at the same time, there is a distinctivity. 
So we know the Father is different from the Son, and so on and so forth, although there is a unique oneness between them. The Greek word used for the word, for word in the text is the, is the Greek word logos. And logos in its original form means saints or word. Word here then is a proper noun. Notice that it is written as a proper noun. In the beginning was the word. Logos or the word then personified God the Father and his revelation of himself to us. In Greek philosophy and its world view, the Logos was, was thought of as a bridge between the transcendent God and the material universe. Now, in the understanding, or in this understanding, it would likely make reference to God mediating principle between God and the world. John, however, presents Jesus not just as a mediating principle, but presents Jesus as a personal being, fully divine, yet fully human. For he became flesh. He was from the beginning. He was with God. He was also God. He was God's expression which brought creation into existence. Let there be, and there was. But then, when he wanted to find a way to connect with humankind and to redeem them, the word became flesh and dwell with us. Came man, be like us. The Bible says, Christ who thought it robbery not to be equal with the Father, made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant. He became like us. Hear what John 1, verse 1 to 3 and verse 14, an actual reading tells us. He said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In verse 14, And the Word was made flesh, and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. The word becoming flesh speaks, in essence, to the incarnation of Christ. The word incarnation means to be made flesh, which is the union of divinity with humanity in Christ, and became, brothers and sisters, he became the mediator between God and human, the divine, the infinite, and the finite. This is at the essence of the name Emmanuel. Hear what Isaiah 7 verse 14 says. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Here Matthew. Matthew 1 and verse 23 says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God is with us. The name Emmanuel is a symbolic name, meaning God with us, expressed through the incarnate Son of God. This is a little, this, this brothers and sisters, is a title describing the deity of the person of Christ, the Son of God, and implies that God himself has come to us through the person of Jesus Christ. Now, when the Word was made flesh, brothers and sisters, based on the text we read, we see where the Bible says, He brought life, for in Him was life. Now, we were all dead under the condemnation of sin and death, but when Christ came, He brought life. Christ came that we may truly live spiritually, emotionally, physically, socially, financially, brothers and sisters, living and living abundantly. Hear what John 3, 
verse 15 to 16 tell us, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear what John 10 and verse 10 says to us, The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Brothers and sisters, with the word becoming flesh, Christ come to break everything that is dead on us. That the death, the power of death and sickness and diseases and poverty and all of these things which cripple our being, Christ come to make us have life. For in him was life. Who have the Son of Man has life. He that has not the Son of Man has not life. The devil comes to kill, to steal, to destroy, steal your hope, steal your joy, steal your home, steal your family, steal your happiness, steal your prosperity. But Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. When the word became flesh, he brought light, not only life, but light. Hear what verse, um, part B of verse 4 says. The life was the light of humankind. And the light shone in the darkness. And the darkness could not overpower it. Hmm? The darkness could not comprehend it. While life represents salvation and deliverance through Christ, the light Christ brought denotes new revelation of God himself. And of God himself to humankind, to show of his power, of his might, to, to, to lift us from the powers of darkness. Hear what Matthew 4 and verse 16 says. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and those who dwell in the land are the region of the shadow of death. Upon them at a light sprung. Jesus comes to break us free out of every dark situation in our lives. Some of us cannot see our way clearly, but whatever is the power that is holding us restricted, the power of Jesus comes in the word as he comes to express the Father who is light to us. He comes to give us life. He comes to give us light. He comes to light our path and to break us free. So if you are in a situation right now, and you're feeling that there is no way out. Jesus, the light, has come. The Bible says, arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. When the word became flesh, he came to make us into true children of his father. And to make us part of the family of God. To make us become heirs and joint heirs of the promises of God. What verse 10 to 13 tell us? He was in the world and the world knew him not. The world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. He comes to make us family. Yes, 1 John 3 and verse 1 to 2 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world knows us not, because they knew him not. Beloved, now are we the children of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Brothers and sisters, we, we join with the angel and we sing glory to God in the highest. Peace and earth and goodwill to humankind because the word has become flesh. Yes, the word has become flesh. And we are made to have life and light. We have been broken free from the enslavement of sin and the power of death. The Lord God Almighty has set us free. Thank you, Lord, for the word which has become flesh. And God is still speaking to us through Jesus. He is still speaking to us, allowing us to understand that, brothers and sisters, we are His. And there is no power 
that can hold us. Hallelujah. Thank you for the prize. 